and we'll get started. All right, so we've been talking a lot about the dishwasher. We talked about the components. We talked about cycling temperatures. We even talked a little bit about the diagram. So today, we're going to do a little bit more about the diagram, and we're going to actually show, like, if I'm going to be using a meter, and I'm going to troubleshoot the dishwasher doesn't fill or doesn't drain or something like that, how do you use this diagram and how do you go to the machine and actually do it? You know, there's one thing to see on the paper and I say, oh, you can put your meter here and here and you're going to check voltage here, but it's not really on the machine. And you're like, well, I see it on the paper. I don't, still don't get what you're talking about. So it's not going to be a real long lecture. It's going to be about 30 or 40 minutes or so, but we're going to talk a little bit about troubleshooting and the two tests that we normally make why are we going to make one test over another and how does that benefit our troubleshooting okay um, so here's the diagram but I also have this other screen open let's first start off talking about the the dishwasher fill circuit I think I have let me see something here One second. Is that as far back as I can go? Okay. All right, this was the fill circuit. No. One second. Trying to get to that circuit. Okay. So this was the dishwasher fill circuit that we talked about the other day. And we said dishwasher is not filling with water. Okay, we start with something very simple, very basic. We said that power comes in, goes through the door switch. From the door switch, it goes to the main board. That there is a relay on the board, and it comes out the board through the float switch here. And um, I don't know why the diagram is a little bit off here. There we go. Um, it goes through the float switch here and back through the other door switch on the neutral side. So, when we troubleshoot a machine, first two things we look at is what is working and what is not working. Okay, you want, you want to know, like someone calls you out and says, hey, my dishwasher is not working. A lot of times a customer might not say, well, it's running, it's just not filling with water. Some customers don't even notice that. They just know at the end of the cycle, soap's still in there and it didn't clean their dishes. So, you as a technician, have to ask the customer questions. That is part of your troubleshooting. And you, they might have cleaned the old soap out and you didn't even know that water didn't come in and didn't wash that soap away. They opened it up. Some people are very, very like, you know, I hate to say the word anal about things, but they, they're sitting there and, and they're like, oh, oh, I got soap. Let me clean it up. Let me clean it up. You know, some people don't care and leave it a mess. So you have to ask questions. Well, what happened when you when the last time you used a dishwasher? Oh, I used it a couple of days ago, and I put dishes in, and when I opened it up, they were still dirty. Did it look like it washed them, or did it look exactly like you put them in there? Oh, it looked exactly like I put them in there. Okay. Um, did you hear any noises? Did you see anything? Sometimes customers will actually tell you the problem and narrow it down for you in their diagnostics. So you have to question them to get an idea okay now i'm going to troubleshoot the dishwasher and you're going to turn it on and you're going to go through so the first thing we're going to do is that if it, it's not working is we're just going to go right over here to our field test right a, a water service test i don't know why i can't tap there on the screen anymore but if we go to our water service test and why is that like that Oh, here it is. That's what I'm clicking on the wrong one. So if we go on the water service test, that'll go through each one of these steps and check every electrical component in the machine for you. It's not going to tell you if they're good or bad, but what it's going to do is going to try to energize that part. You as a technician, you have to see, listen, hear, smell, whatever. Is it working? Is it doing what it's supposed to be doing? So in this case, the dishwasher is not filling with water. The first service test is fill detergent dispenser. I had a technician, one of my technicians called me today 
and had a Frigidaire dishwasher and it, it wasn't doing something. And I said, well, go to service test. And I had to have him run through this test to help him troubleshoot it. So go back to our circuit. Here's our water valve. How much power does the water valve get in order to work? 120. So they're getting the full power here. Remember, on some products, some parts only work off of low voltage. Some work off of DC volts instead of AC volts. They work off of different voltages. So we have to know how much power is going to whatever part we're testing. I had a GE washing machine, an old profile GE washing machine. And it said that if the, if the water valve was leaking water into the machine by itself, the machine would automatically turn the pump on and start draining out, even if the customer's not using the machine. Some manufacturers do that. If the water level switch, I think in a Whirlpool Duet, I'm not sure now, it's been a while, that if it noticed water was inside the tub when the customer wasn't using it, the control board will turn the pump on and, and try to pump that water out so it doesn't flood their home. Customer could be walking by and say, hey, is my washing machine running? I'm not using it. And then they'll know there's a problem in there. When they open it up, they see water in there. Okay? So in order for the pump to run, the door has to lock. So they'll hear that machine running, and they didn't even press start. They may call you and tell you, my machine's working by itself, not even telling you the problem is what? It's, it's filling, and it's not supposed to be. So you have to go. But going back to that GE washer, the GE washer was low voltage. I think it was only like 12 volts DC, the water valve solenoid. Um, we had one here. Uh, forget about it. I'll, I'll get it later. But the water valve solenoid on the washing machine on the washing machine was only 12 volts. I didn't know it, and I told the guy, "Well, look at if you if you send power to the water valve and the water valve's calling for water, let's see if the pump turns on by itself. So let's put a test cord on the valve, plug it into the wall, send power right to the valve." And then as the water comes in, you didn't start the machine, it should turn the pump on. Well, the guy did that, and it was a 12-volt solenoid, so he burned it out right away. So like the point I was trying to say is you need to know how much voltage goes there because when you're troubleshooting, I, I need to know if I'm getting voltage to that part. That's what's going to make this water valve work is if I have 120 volts right to that part. Okay? So let's just say I came to this dishwasher here. And the water valve's right down here on the bottom. I'll turn it sideways so you can see it. Well, we'll leave the control panel down for now. I don't know if you can see the water valve down here on the bottom of the dishwasher. The water valve's all the way down here. Okay, I can't turn it all the way that way. So, so the water valve's there. Keep, keep these weights so it don't fall off the table. So, one thing I want to know is if I'm getting power to that water valve. You could just go to this dishwasher here and start the machine up and wait for that timer to send power. The problem is it doesn't send power to that water valve all the time. So you put your meter there, it may say zero volts, and you say, well, I'm not getting powered. The board may be bad or something else may be bad. So if you're not in that diagnostic cycle, you don't know if the board's sending power or not. So if you go into diagnostics, it says the very first few, few 60 seconds or something like that, it's sending power to that valve. You should have power right away. So let's take a look at this here. I'm going to get extension cord. We'll fix that right now. Someone bring me the extension cord, please. Right underneath the table right there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Go, go like this and touch it like a 9-volt battery to your tongue and see if it's got a charge. Trying, I can't see that wire terminal to hold that 
That switch. There, there it goes. Okay, so leave it right like that. Okay, so just plug it in. Now we don't have the motor in here. Uh, wait a minute, unplug it a sec. A lot of things are disconnected. So let's come down here for a second and help me reconnect the water valve here. This is this is the water valve. Find the find the two wires for the float switch here. There should be two wires. What color wires should they be to the float switch? White and purple. No, look at the di look at the diagram. What what color wires going to the water level switch? Pink. Pink, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the ones that are going to connect to that float switch there. All right, go ahead and plug the dishwasher in for me. Well, that almost fell on your head. Man, these knees. These old knees. All right. So we want to go into the service, water service test. You all look at your sheet. How do I get into the water service test here? But the key thing is what's in bold just before you what you said. Wow. 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 Power, power, power failure mode is no lights are lit up on your control. And like you unplugged it and plugged it back in. And the reason why we unplug it, we want to unplug it for a few seconds usually. Because if you unplug and plug real fast, it may retain the memory. Capacitors and stuff on the board still have a charge. It may go right back into the cycle. So if you got a digital machine and you want to like go into diagnostics, it says enter power failure mode or something like that. Unplug it, wait 10, 15, 20 seconds or something like that, then plug it back, and that'll allow you some time to go back into that diagnostics. So it says for the water service test, press the options and start cancel for one second. So options are here and start cancel. So basically you're just going to go like this. And I'm in the, the diagnostic cycle. Or am I? this dishwasher lighting up now I told you we're missing the motor but it still should light up the board right well it should be but remember we said on this diagram let me go to the other one that's bigger that power comes into the board where what two terminals does the board get power on P37 and P36. P37 and P36. They're not going through the door switch, are they? No. I don't care if the motor's not there. If you look, line one and neutral, there are no safety thermostats. There's no fuses or nothing. That board should have power all the time. Okay. So I would dare to fix the, the, the water valve not filling. I even got the board coming on. So how do we test that? How do we test that? Is this, we got a problem in here. Well, we got a test cord, not the water valve. We still want to get the board to work because it, a customer may call me out for a water valve problem, but the board problem may be what's causing the water valve problem. So we check your voltage. Um coming out of the, or going to the board through those same relays? Yeah, we want to check the power going to the board. And so what we would want to do is if we went into the control panel here, uh-oh. You all see it? The plug on the board was loose. That may have happened when the, when the, when the, when the fell down, right? So I'm going to unplug the, the, this, plug it back in. And then let's let's try to go into that water service test again. Man, it work. Now, what what I do want to say is that you know sometimes you go out to fix one problem in a machine, and as an owner of a company, they want you to test the machine after you replace the part. I have technicians; they're in such a hurry because they got so many jobs in there, and they're running behind. And they go in and they install the part. And they weren't even the one that ordered the part. Someone else ordered it. They go in and install it because that person may be on vacation or something like that. 
They don't even test it. And then they say, you know, we're getting a call from a customer that's flooded the machine or the house or, or something didn't work right. And, you know, you're in a hurry because you have other jobs and you may be running behind. But just think now, because if a customer's call me and tell me, you just installed a part and it's flooding their house, what am I going to do? Somebody else or I might be calling you on the well, phone. I need you to go back. And I tell you what, you all be there that, that one time when they're calling telling you to go back and you're already like frustrated that you're running behind everything else. I got to go back. I still have five more calls. Yeah, but you didn't test the machine out properly. What am I paying you to do? Yeah. And, and forget about if I'm the owner of the company and you're the employee. What if it's your own business and a customer calls you back? It's flooding your house. Oh, I'll be there tomorrow. Oh, uh, hell no. You're coming right now. I learned one thing is you pay by credit card because you can always call the credit card company and dispute and get your money back. You pay by cash. That person might not ever come back. Okay? But that's neither here nor there. Uh, so anyways, let's go ahead. I fixed the connection to the board. Fix one problem. Now, I didn't put any problems in this machine, so everything should be working properly, but we'll talk more about how and where you make these tests. So we got this dishwasher, and I'm going to press start, cancel, and options for one second. Start lights blinking. He drives on. I should be in my diagnostic mode. Now, when I do that, what's supposed to happen? Am I supposed to press any more buttons or do any more things after that point? Or once I do that, I'm in my first test. Push I'm the in my start and cancel to advance to the next step. Okay, well, thing is, is I don't know what step I'm at. Start at step one. Okay. We had to fill the the first second. Now, when I went in, it was blinking. The water valve didn't come on right away. I press the start button, the water valve's on. I know it because I'm touching the cabinet of the machine and I can feel the vibration of the water valve all the way from here. But that's not how we want to test it. In order for that water valve to work, I have to have 120 volts. I do not need to have the plug on the water valve connected to make that test. I will on all other components, but this plug going to the water valve here, the one I just connected, this plug going to my water valve is line one in neutral. It's basically that power cord extended to this plug here. Let me see. Can can they see what I'm doing on the on the camera? Yes. Let me uh, zoom in here just a little bit more. So when you're checking power to a load, sometimes you can disconnect that plug on that load right here. And I'm going to stick my meter in here to check for what. For voltage. Okay, so I got one of my digital meters here. This is my personal meter and my analog meter. So I got, I can do either one. Okay. I'm going to go here to volts. It's got the AC and the DC in the same symbol there. So here I need to see, well, I can't tell if it says AC or DC. Oh, there it is. Right here, and I'll, and I'll come around and show you. AC is a little squiggly line, like a sideways S. That is the same as what we call a sine wave, an electrical sine wave. An AC voltage is created. It's registered on a meter that way. It's pulsing that way. So if you look by the zero there, can you see the little squiggly line yeah. there? See it there? That's AC voltage. See the little squiggly line there? Okay. See? I'll put it here so your phone can get it. And there's a squiggly line right there. Put it here so your camera can get it. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I can leave it attached to the water valve. If, if that plug was attached to the water valve, I could come in the back side of that plug with my meter leads here and check for power. Now, where am I on this diagram? Now, I can't, you know what, I'm going to have to just redo this whole diagram because 
I want to do some notes on here. Oh, that's the water valve circuit right here. So where am I on this wiring diagram here? Where I know the meter leads came out, but where am I physically here? Let's first do the real diagram. Where am I? You run our I want to erase all this yeah, here. No, I am. I'm. Okay. This plug goes to the water valve. Oh yeah. So it's connected right to what the water valve. Yeah. So my meter lead is right here on the water valve. Yeah. Yeah. I can plug that plug back on the valve, but physically those two points are the electrical part on this valve okay so i could take this plug from the front side here a little bit easier like this like that i can plug it right in here so it can fit out fit with the meter lead and right now it's showing a tenth of a volt why because it's not running <coughs> And plug it in. Do I have voltage? Yes. How come I have 118 volts? I haven't even pressed start on this board yet. Because the, because you, you got it. You got it's running straight to the Is board. Is your switch already closed? So yes. it's going to run through the whole thing? Yeah, it's already the yeah. Is present, but, it's, uh, but we're still in the diagnostic cycle. Look how long I had that dishwasher unplugged, and it never canceled out of the diagnostic oh. cycle. Oh. Let's. How do I get out? Look at the instructions. Is there an explanation of how to get rid of the diagnostic cycle so I can start all over again? What? It says in state. So if I keep, well, right now, all the, all the power is off now. It's 4.8 volts, so it, it, it's done now. It's done. There's no more lights here on the, on the display. So when I unplugged it, plugged it back, it probably realized, hey, there was a power failure. I was in the middle of diagnostic mode. Let's just get out of it. And that's what it did. It, it ended its own cycle. So I'm going to unplug it, wait a few seconds, and this is what you do in the home before you go into diagnostics. You're going to disconnect the power. This plug is usually through the cabinet underneath the sink. Now, if a dishwasher is hardwired into the home, they're using a flexible conduit and, and wire nutted in the wall, we just find a circuit breaker in the home that controls the dishwasher and turn it off and turn it back on through the circuit breaker. Okay, so now when I go here and plug it back in, all the lights came on. And what does it mean when all the lights are on? Well, from what we found, power failure. Power failure. That's, that was that question on the test, right? Power failure. So I'm going to cancel out. Hold it for three seconds to cancel. It says it right there. Now if I can cancel out. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000. And it's not canceling out. So I'm just going to unplug it again. And give it a minute to reset. And this is why you have to unplug it and wait. Because if it doesn't erase that memory in there, it's not going to be. So when I plug it in, and if all these lights come back on from a power failure mode, all I'm going to do is hit cancel. And it should take a few seconds. A lot of times when that happens, you hit cancel, it goes into a drain out mode for one to two minutes, and then it will completely shut down. So we have to wait for that to happen. Okay, so it's blinking, it's doing some things, and now it's completely shut off. So that's the cancel portion of the cycle. So now that I'm in there, I'm going to press these two for a second. Now I'm in diagnostics. We don't have voltage yet, right? I press it one more time to enter, and I should be going into, into fill right now. Oh, one of my leader leads came out. And now I have voltage there. So if my dishwasher did not fill and I had 120 here in my test mode, what do I do now? If I have 120 here and no water was coming in, what do I do now? 
change the water valve. That's it. But we do have to check one more thing. Make sure that the water is turned on. Yeah, I mean, the customer could have had a plumber do some work and they turn the water off underneath the sink and never turned it back on. Three days later, they go to use a dishwasher. It don't work. They don't say, oh, the plumber must have turned it off. And they call you out for a service call, right? Uh, what about the, is it the fill, the float? So that has anything to do with your water? Yes, the, the float here is in series with the water valve. And if that flow switch is bad, I wouldn't have power here. That's line one. It's got to get through there to get to that. Okay. So what if my meter said zero volts at that point? Then your water valve, I mean, your um, water valve isn't a problem. You're not getting voltage. I'm not getting power to it. I could still have a bad valve, but not until I prove that there's power there that I'm going to do anything. So I, I press cancel for a few seconds. Hopefully it will cancel out of its cycle. And let's unplug it for a minute. So if I don't have voltage, according to this, where I had volt, where I had my, my voltage test here and here, and I got zero volts. I know we got 120 there, but let's assume we didn't have voltage there. We have to find out why are we not getting voltage to that valve. And it could be this float switch right here. It could be the control board. Probably not the door switches. Why? We talked about that. Why most likely the door switches are not part of my problem? Because you're not going through your door switch for power. Yes, we are. We're going through the door switch oh, here oh, and the door okay. switch here. No. Because, because it's actually... Well, because, because everything else is working. So. Else yeah, we said it was running and the motor was running. And then we didn't test the motor. But the lady said, yeah, I heard everything running, but I didn't hear dishwasher washing dishes. But would that be something you want to prove before you start making tests? You want to check the water valve. You want to see if the pump works, the motor works, everything works. What's working or not working before we start doing this voltage test? Because there may be three parts that are not working and only one switch controls all three. You're going to go right to that switch. You're not going to go to each one of those three and test them to try to find out what's going on. If you have three parts, they're usually like this in a diagram. They're all parallel to each other. So yeah, you could have a bad pump, but the water valve's still gonna work. It, the water valve has nothing to do with the pump or the drain. So now let's go back to square one. We went over, we went through the diagnostic test, we heard the motor, we heard the pump, we heard the drain, we heard all those things working. Now we would do this voltage test, not right away. I did it right away, why? Because I had the dishwasher all open and exposed on a table. It's easy to do a voltage test. You know, my house, my stepmother had this house that she had a refrigerator twice flood her house. And in doing so, ruined the tile that she had. So she had got money from the insurance company to retile the, the main part of the house. Well, instead of removing the old tile, they put tile on top of tile. Okay, first of, first of all, my kitchen counter is about as high as this. Not exactly, but, you know, you're used to a counter being a certain height. You go to, into my dishwasher, and I must have get down on my knees to put stuff in it. Now, here's the problem. My dishwasher's old. I got to replace the dishwasher. I might not be able to get it out. First of all, the top is granite. So to get the dishwasher out, it's got to come up and over the tile. So now I got to chip tile away just to get the dishwasher out. So if I had that tile this high up, getting to the water valve is not as easy as you would think. And there's usually two screws right here, only about an inch off the bottom to get this lower access panel out of the way. So doing a voltage test there is not as easy as well because they tiled right in front of it. So let's assume we have zero volts. 
So we have to do something. You'll hear a lot of terms backtracking or, or there's a couple other names for it. I don't know the name for it, but if we don't have voltage, we have to find out how far back do we have voltage? Where, where is the voltage if it didn't make it here? So when we do that backtracking, we typically only move one meter lead. Now, I could move this one here and go this way through the neutral, but is that a good idea? I mean, do you think I should go this way back through this one, or should I go the other way? Why the other way, though? Well, it takes both sides. So if either side's broken, the part's not going to work. But why would we go on the line one side, which is here, instead of going to the neutral side here? You mean for... To look, to, for, 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 to look for, for the voltage. To look for the voltage. The water valve. Yes. Why go to the end of the term? No. Instead of somewhere we're, else. We're on the valve. Right, right, right. We have to, we have to find out. Why would you put your meter leak there? Let, 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 me, let me be a little, bit more, a little bit more of an explanation. Let me go to a blank screen for a second. Just a whole blank screen. Okay. So we got a switch here, a light bulb, a switch here, and neutral. I put my meter here and it says, oh, I got zero volts. Well, if one switch was working, even line one, there is power here, but if the neutral's broken, my meter is nothing more than a light bulb. Back in the day when they did voltage, they didn't have specific meters give you an exact voltage reading. They had a test light. Do I have power here? Do I have power there? Whatever. So my meter acts like a light bulb when I'm doing a voltage test. So if this is broken, that light ain't going to work. Neither is my meter. Yes, I have voltage here, but my meter needs both sides of the electrical circuit to give me a reading. So you put it on the other side of the switch. If I move this one here on the other side of the switch, which is the neutral side, and I go over here, now all of a sudden what? I got 120 if that switch is back. But going back to the water valve circuit that we were talking about, I'll go all the way back there to this. Where was the one that I did? I can't find it now. Maybe it's this one. Okay, going back in this water valve circuit here, I originally went here and I had zero volts. Where do I go? Do I go neutral or do I go line one? I have to choose one side. It doesn't matter. If I don't find the problem on one side, then I will go the other side. But why? Would I make the decision to go one way or the other now? Because if you go, if you go from where you got your first meter lead at, and you go to neutral, you can check the the flow switch, the water valve too, at the same time. As at the same time, you're checking both. Not, not exactly. Uh, let, 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 let's first let me explain what, the, why I'm asking that question. Okay. You can troubleshoot either way. If you don't find, if your meter does not register voltage, you put it back and you go this way with the other meter lead. Okay? So I'm either going to take one meter lead here and here, and I'm going to keep going back this way to neutral, or I'm going to keep going back this way until my meter says, you have voltage. Because my, my first test was to the valve, and it said, I don't have voltage. Okay? I'm trying to find out where is the voltage. If I broke this, this pressure switch right here, let me get my eraser here. If I erase that pressure switch, right, and I put my meter there, what's it going to say now? Say no Zero. So where do I have to? I have to move this meter lead all the way up to this point because this is as far as line one can get. It won't make it to the water valve. So when I'm backtracking, I'm looking to see where voltage is. And this is where I started. I'm going to tell you why we're going to do one test over another test, voltage versus ohms. First of all, voltage is checking the electrical circuit. When I go to this water valve right here and I go for voltage, and I'm just going to erase this and start over. I had another valve circuit here drawn somewhere. I'll just do this one. So here's the board with a relay then a float switch, and then you got the water valve. If I go here and here in zero volts, 
what am I actually checking when I'm checking for voltage? What am I testing? Right here, where the where the meter is, zero volts. This is my meter here. Only testing that that meter or that component right there. No. Oh well, no, because you see that you get line one and you see you get neutral if you get 120 volts. But I'm telling you, I put my meter here and it says zero. What is that meter testing right now? When I put those two meter leads there, what am I actually testing? Am I checking the water valve solenoid? I'm seeing power from the circuit is to the water valve. Now, if my meter said I had power and the valve didn't work, the problem is the power. Okay? But when we're doing voltage test, we're putting our meter on the valve, but I'm not checking the valve. I'm checking this circuit coming to the valve. Because when I have 120 here, that means this is coming in here. Oops, let me just redo that. That means I got neutral here and line one is here. A voltage check is checking what I just highlighted in blue. It's checking to see if that circuit is good because it's got to go back to get that voltage. It's not checking the valve. How do I check the valve? With what? What would you say? Ohms. Resistance test. But is that a good test? Yeah. What? What if I, my meter said 40 ohms? You're going to say, okay, the problem's not the valve? It depends on what's, what's the uh, specifications that for that part, right? Well, let's just say the diagram said the valve is 40 ohms. You put your meter on it, and it said that valve is 40 ohms. That Does that mean the valve's good? No. Why? Because it doesn't mean you have to have something mechanical wrong with the actual... It, it could be clogged up. It... it, 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 it there's a spring in there, maybe a spring broke inside. Electrically, the solenoid is good in giving you a reading, but it doesn't mean it's physically opening and closing. Ohms don't tell you that. And you still don't know if you're getting power to it to make it work to begin with. So troubleshooting 99% of the time has to be done with voltage. We need to know if we got voltage to the part. Or if we don't, how come we're not getting voltage to the part? One of these parts in this circuit are bad, not bringing voltage to my part. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so we say that I checked my meter here and it said zero volts. So that meant there's a problem in my circuit. So going back to my question is how do I choose whether it's the neutral side or the line one side? Which way do I go? You go from do, do I, I got two meter leads here, right? When I got two me, wait, wait, one second. When I got two lead, meter leads, I'm only going to remove one and go backwards with just the one. I'm not moving both. I'm either going to go back line one, I'm going to go back neutral. Now, if I go back neutral, I only have one switch. If I go back line one, I have one, two, three controls on the other side, right? I got more things to test. But, I wouldn't check neutral. What was it you were going to say, sir? You already confirmed neutral is good because everything else is working. Your motor is running. Your neutral is confirmed already. Your door switch is confirmed already. That's exactly why I'm saying that. Remember, we saw the motor. and I said it just a minute ago. Let's check the motor and drain pump are working. If all of those are working, this switch and this switch both have to be good because if either one of them to fail, none of those parts will work. So again, observation of what is working is part of that troubleshooting. A lot of people just say, oh, I'm going to read this diagram. You know, 99% of the time we service appliances, we never even pick up the wiring diagram. I'd say it's only about 10, 20% overall that you have to go to a schematic and you have to do what we're talking about today. But nothing frustrates a technician more when they look at the diagram and they don't know how to use it to troubleshoot. So everybody wants to learn to read these diagrams, but you have to know, you got a leaky pump. You know, you got a noisy bearing. A voltmeter and our own meter ain't gonna tell you nothing about it. But this is how we go approaching this machine. We have to test and see what's working, what's not working. 
We do a voltage test, find out we don't have voltage. Now we have to find that voltage. Okay, so we do something called backtracking. I'm not going to even backtrack the neutral side because the only thing here is the door switch. And if the door switch was bad, the pumps and motors wouldn't work. So I'm not even worried about them. I've already eliminated this door switch, and this door switch is my problem. Now I have three parts that possibly cause the problem. The water valve, the float switch, or the relay on the board. Now I'm going to backtrack to find my voltage. So where do I where do I put this meter lead right here? And I'm I'm, I'm gonna before you tell me, I'm gonna do this: A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, and L. Those are all test points where in the machine you can put your meter to check for voltage. Right now we're on what test point? H and I. H and I. Yeah. My meter's on oh, yeah. H and I on the valve. That's where it is on the on the dishwasher right now on H and I. Okay, and my and my meter said what? Zero volts. Okay, so what do we do now? Where's my next test? So um, oh. um, I to G. I to G. So let's take this meter lead here. And we're going to go I to G. Why did I go there? Because there are more components to test on this side over there. But why didn't I just go to F? Why, why did I stop at G and not at F? You were correct. No, don't think, well, why am I wrong? No. Why did I ask a question? Because sometimes wires get broken. If I have voltage here, but don't have it here, I lost it between these two tests. This test said zero. This test said 120. My problem is a broken wire. I had a friend of mine, a former student, lives up in North Florida on a panhandle. Got his own business. And he was working on a frigid air stack washer and dryer. A couple of you guys are working on them now. Okay, and he couldn't figure out what was wrong with the machine. And he called tech support, and one guy didn't know. He talked to a second guy. The second guy said, oh, your lower wiring harness is bad. There's something wrong in your wiring harness. So he called me because he didn't think either one of the guys knew what they say. I said, check here, check there, check there. I said, your problem is that wire from this plug to there. That's what needs to be fixed. And while I'm talking to you, I can't. My phone. I was going to upload the picture and show you. He's holding, holding the wire with a with a crimp on it. He fixed it. Got the machine working. Where the other guy told him change the whole harness. <laughs> now there's nothing wrong with that. The harness had a break in it, but I talked him down to the exact wire that was broken. He physically found it and repaired it and got the machine working. Now if you have your own business. You can say, well, there's something wrong with your wiring harness. I need to get a wiring harness, and the customer's going to pay for it. You pay wholesale. They pay retail, so you can make money on the part. But you're not going to make money on the job because you know what? You have to leave to order the part and come back. But after he called me, he knew the exact wire was broken. He fixed the machine, and he got paid right then and there. And if you all want your own business, the only way you're going to make money is first time completes. Because going to a customer's house twice is more gas and more time. Not just time, though, but the time you're in the house a second time could have been a new customer with new money. So you have to be able to think and say, how am I going to get this thing fixed? Now, we don't want to rig a machine and not make it safe and accurate. You know, not everything can be fixed with duct tape. You know, but we want to do that. So when we do a voltage test, we went from... H to I to G to I, we're checking across just the wire. If I had voltage at that point, G and, G and I here and here, but I didn't have it on H and I, then that's my problem and I have to fix that wire. So where is that on the machine? Is that I'm going to leave the meter here on the white wire, which is the neutral, 
I'm going to take the pink one off and I'm going to go to the water level switch. Now here's a problem is I don't know which one of these wires is point G. Now I could follow it. I could say, well, this pink wire here, if I follow that pink wire back, it's this one here and that one is the bottom one of the two. I could physically find it. But then sometimes you work on a machine, those wires are hidden inside panels and stuff like that. So if you didn't know which one of these pink ones was F or G, which is the two on that, on that valve, you could do this. I could check voltage here or voltage here. So watch this. We're going to do the water service test. I'm going to make it act like this switch is bad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lift that float up. No more, the float's not hitting the switch anymore. So it's almost like the switch is bad, not working. So watch this. I'm going to go here. I'm going to plug it in. I'm going to press these, well, I got to wait for it to cancel out again. Hold on a second. Let it cancel out. I got to go back into the water service test. Give it a second. The lights will go out. You have to be patient when you do these things. One thing also, if you got a job, ask the customer for the make and model number if they can give it to you. Because you have to make in the model number and you're going out to the house tomorrow, you have today to get a wiring diagram and get the troubleshooting information and even just look at it. So when you go to a customer's house, you can game plan or get an idea of what you're going to do when you get to the house. Okay, so is it canceled out? It is canceled out. I'm going to go like this. I'm in that test. I'm going to press it one time to do step one. My meter says 2.125 volts. I don't have enough voltage. Let's say I didn't know which one of these pink wires was coming from the valve. So I go like this and I take out, well, not the neutral one, I'm sorry. I take the one that's on the pink plug wire here. I'll just leave this one here on the white. Take this one out. I touch one side. Do I have voltage? No, it says 0 0.057. But then if I go to the other pink wire, maybe I'm not in the test anymore. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know if I'm on the test. Hold on one second. I think I came out of the diagnostic mode. I'll have to restart it. So when you press start cancel, what do most dishwashers do? Oh, you press start cancel. When you press cancel, it resets, but what does it do before it shuts off? It 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 turns on the drain pump in case there was water in there and tries to drain it out, then it'll shut down. So when you do that, you have to sometimes press it twice or just wait till the board times out. It should come out of it now. Let's see if it cancels out. back in the voltage and wait for it to cancel out. Let's unplug it. This water service test is giving me fits here. Wait one second. Got to cancel out. Three, two, come on. Wait for it to shut down. That would be nice if the pump and the motor were hooked up because you could actually hear those parts running and know. So I'm going to press these two. I'm going to go back into water service test. And I'm going to press one more time to get into that, that mode. And I'm on neutral here. And I got my voltmeter on one side of this switch. I'm just going to pull the wires off. Oh, can't get it off that easy. I'm on neutral here. going to make me a liar. I'm going to go to this pink wire down here. I don't have no voltage on the wire. I wonder if I'm, you know what? I might not be getting it far enough in there to get this wire. Nothing there. Go to this pink wire here. I can, I can actually touch it right there. What do I got there? 119 volts. I go to the other side of the float switch, which is down here. 
right there. What do I got? Two volts. So on one side of the switch, I only have two volts. On the other side of the switch, I have 119. So when you got a switch and you don't know which wire, like there's two red wires on there, and you don't know which one's coming in, which one's going out, just touch both sides. If the switch itself is bad, one side will have power, the other side won't. It's not coming out. The one that has power is the one that's going in, but the switch is bad, so it's not coming out. So checking here for zero and checking here and you're getting 120 tells me, ah, that's the switch, that's the problem. And that goes back to me telling you the other day, a guy calls me and says the dishwasher's not filling water, the water valve's my problem, right? No, it, it, it could be that there's no power to it. And you have to backtrack just like I did there to find out where the power is. So I went here and I had zero, but then when I went to the other side of the switch, leaving this one here, and then I had 120, which was F and I, and I had 120 there. Well, between the zero and 120 is where my problem is at. Do you see that? So I know today is Thursday, right? Today's Wednesday. Oh, good. Then I got an assignment for you all tomorrow when you come in. We're going to use this diagram. I'm going to give you a couple copies of this. And the reason why is I'm going to put test points on the diagram here because this A is line one. This is that A right there. This B is here. The C is there. The D is here. The E is is here F G F G H I and then J K J K and then L here so I'm gonna give you a diagram and I'm gonna say water valve not working and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say well you checked A and L and you got 120 well that's good we're supposed to have 120 there and then you checked H and I, and it said zero volts. So now you know what? It's not getting to the water valve. But I'm going to tell you, you tested these two points, you have voltage. You test these two points, you don't have, and these two don't have. And based on the readings I give you, you're going to try to say, oh, well, the problem is this. Now, if I had voltage at F and I, that means line one went all the way to F and neutral is that I, remember I said your meter needs line one and neutral, just like the water valve to work. But when I went to G and I, I had zero volts. So this voltage didn't make it over there. So that's where my problem is, the float switch. So tomorrow I'm going to make up some diagrams. And I'm going to say the drain pump's not working, a wash pump. And instead of having these... Oops. Oh, that's not what I, I think that's what I wanted though, but it's, I wanted these. Oops. I'll just, I'll just move them over here and say, okay, now my, my drain motor is not working. Here's your voltage readings. And I'm going to say, what's wrong with my machine? Why is it not draining? So you're going to have different voltage readings or different voltage points on the diagram. And you're going to try to use those readings to see what is wrong with the machine and what would you replace and then there's a second part to it i just came up with while i'm talking to you i want you to find me the part number and tell me what part you would replace not just the name of the part but give me the part number don't worry i'll print out the parts breakdown for you so you have that there and you don't have to go to the computer you just find say okay the problem's my control board and you look in a paper and say, oh, that's a control board. That's what I would place, this part number. Because that's part of your job as a technician, too. You work for a company, you have to let the office know what part do we need to order to complete the job. You need to look it up. You need to tell us what you need to order. You know, when a technician calls you says, yeah, I got the wrong part. Well, this is the part number you told us to order. So, you know, how did you get the wrong part? You looked it up wrong. But if it's your own company, the last thing you want to do is order the wrong part. Go to someone's house, say, oh, ma'am, uh, they sent me the wrong part. It's the part size. I told them number five, and they told me they gave me ten. 
They gave me the wrong one. You can blame it on them all you want. You still look bad in the customer's house because they're sitting there waiting for you all day. You show up at 4 o'clock in the afternoon to put that part on, and it's the wrong part. So, any questions on this theory? So, I'm going to give you a bunch of different tests, and then I will lecture on it on Tuesday because some of you are part-timers and won't be here Friday and Monday. So, I'll give you them. I will, by the end of the day, actually put up what the answers are so you know if you got them right or not. If you didn't get them right, you'll be able to look at the diagram and try to figure out, okay, what did I do wrong and how did I get it right or wrong? And then on Tuesday, we'll discuss how are we troubleshooting it? What are we doing on this machine? We'll still go to the board and talk about voltage tests on the board. We'll talk about other components within the machine. So I said it wasn't going to be that long. It's 7 o'clock, so we went just, just under an hour. Uh, like I said, I like to keep my lectures about that long. Any questions on this now? You got an idea of what you're going to do for tomorrow? Not really that, but that is pretty much how you would go about a washing machine or maybe a dryer. Or any, any electrical circuit. This backtracking is anything. Evilio was just here. He fought me to death about this backtracking thing. He called me yesterday, him and George. You remember George? Some of you guys don't know him. He works with Vilio, and they've been best friends forever. Um, and he calls me and says, I need you to settle a bet. And George shows me a dryer diagram. And so George is telling me it's not heating. He says, I got 240, but every thermostat and every heater give me 120 volts. I said, how are you getting 120 volts? It's a 240 volt circuit. He says, well, I use neutral. On a 240-volt circuit, you cannot check for a problem to neutral. We'll talk about that in another day, but they were doing it wrong. You need both 120s. We're looking for 240. We're not looking for 120. And if this was 240 here and here, and this switch was broken, let's just move this up. This switch was broken. Well, line one would be here, and I'd have 120 to neutral or ground. I'd also have 120 here to ground, not from line one, but line two would feed back, feed back through this circuit and come all the way to this point. So I'll have 120 no matter where I touch, whether the circuit's good or bad. That's a whole other can of worms that we'll talk about on another day. So I will work tomorrow. I'll get in here like my usual time and I'll create these little diagrams for you and give, give you some stuff for troubleshooting. Okay, remember the more I get you to look at these wiring diagrams, we've been talking about the same diagram for two weeks now. It's more familiar to you now than it was last week. The more we talk about it, the more it's familiar. You know, like a new person comes in the class, they're a stranger to you, you don't know them. But after you talk to them for a little while and get to know them, now you know that person and you're familiar with them, you're more comfortable. That's how you're going to get with these machines practice, practice, practice. Anyways, anybody got any questions before we break? Have a good day.